We're, we're looking at growth and decay. Now, what is worth drawing, even if it's not my, my beautiful illustration there, what is worth drawing is two brief little, very small um, axes here. And you can see I'm only doing, at the moment, the um, positive y part of the axis. And the reason for that is because in a growth and decay situation, you don't go under. Oh, you, so exponentials. Yeah, so exponentials, right, are always going to stay either always above or always below, of course, uh, withholding any shifts, which is exactly what we were talking about. Very good, very good. So let's let's think about decay first, because this is the first way to look at uh, what comes under extension one. It's the most natural place to have a look at what becomes extension one growth and decay. Let's just really quickly. Good morning. Let's quickly draw a decay graph. Just a simple, you know, something like this. Something like so. Uh, this is what a typical decay situation looks like. And we also have an asymptote on this, just like every exponential does. Where's the asymptote? Y and y equals zero. Very good, so let's, let's put that in. So you can go ahead and you can label this, uh, for example, P equals, now it's decay, right? It's decay. So when you've got your A to the something here, in order to make it decay rather than growth, Good morning. What am I going to have up there in the numerator? Minus k. Very good. So that minus sign, I mean, we know that k is a constant, but we tend to define k as a positive constant so that when you look at this, you see the minus sign and you're like, oh, yeah, it's decay. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, and as we pointed out, we don't usually bother with this, but let's also label uh, this is y equals zero. I should say, in fact, not y equals zero, but um, because of the way I've written this equation, I actually have different labels for my axes, right? What are my labels? This is actually a t-axis over here, right? And this vertical axis, for the way I've defined it, is the p-axis, like population or whatever it is. So in fact, I really should write this as not y equals zero, but good. OK. So here is a decay situation. We understand this. We're going to drop down and down and down. Uh, what's this value here? That value there? One. Zero. When t equals zero, if I simply substitute that in, right, when t equals zero, I've got a e to the zero, which is a times one. So this is a, or sometimes we've been calling it p naught, or whatever it is. So that's the situation. Fair enough. Beautiful. Now, what's interesting about this is that if I think about populations, right, so this is like maybe a population dying away, uh, this looks like it's just disappearing. It's going off to zero, okay? Now, down over here, we're going to get to like, um, you know, numbers less than one. So if it's actually a population, at some point, that population is going to drop below one. And I guess our model says, oh, I guess everyone in this population has died. Sorry, okay? However, we know that there are lots of situations that do not do this, right? They do have this overall shape, this overall behavior, but this sort of line here, well, it shouldn't belong there. Things don't always just approach zero when the de they're decaying, right? Radioactive decay, it might, you know, the material will eventually all disappear. But what if there are constraints, and so sometimes it's actually called constrained growth and decay. Sometimes there are constraints on a situation that mean you don't always drop off to zero, or you don't always come up to, like, go off to infinity. Bless you. Okay. So, what if, for example, you have a hot object, Right? So you've got a pot of boiling water, you've just brought up to the boil, which is what temperature, by the way? 100 degrees at atmospheric air pressure. Okay. You're your 100 degrees Celsius, and then you pull it off, and then you just leave it in room temperature. Okay? So it's like 18, 19 degrees at the moment. Clearly that's going to cool down, but it's not going to cool to zero, is it? Right? What's it going to cool down to? It's going to cool down to whatever I told you room temperature is, 18 or 19 degrees. And then it will stop. So how would such a situation look different from this? Instead of this p equals zero being the asymptote, I'm going to raise this whole thing. Yeah. So for example, if I call this here, let's now I'm talking about temperature. So let's call this t equals 18. Okay. Now instead of a p for population axis, I've got a temperature axis. As you can imagine, we don't really, we're not really that keen on having two axes both named T. However, temperature and time are so frequently compared to each other, they just kind of just go with it. So capital and lowercase. Once you've moved that asymptote up, everything else is the same. It's still doing exactly the same kind of growth decay thing. 
okay? However, a couple of things to point out. Number one, let's think about this equation. Uh, sorry, this is T, not P. <clears throat> because you've got this uh, lifted up sort of value, right? Um, this one particularly here, it's gone, everything up from here has just raised up 18 units, right? So instead of just this on its own, I'm going to have uh, that plus 18. Now just by convention, people tend to write the 18 first. We'll talk in a minute about why that is the case. Plus, now if I put in a e to the minus kt here, right? Um, there's just one more thing I want to point out, which is that this value here, times zero, right? In the past, we would call this P0 or T0 or whatever it is to signify that. But you can see at time 0, I'm not going to be equal to A, am I? Right? Which is why I'm not going to call this T0. When I put in time equals 0, I'm going to get A T plus A times 1, which is A. Right? So in fact, the distance A here is not actually that, I'm sorry, the, the number A. Where is it? It's not that point so much as it's that distance. Right, it's the distance between what you're moving to and where you are. It's that distance there. Right? So this is one of the reasons why, you know, when I first introduced these equations, we, we will see P0, we'll see T0, and that's a good way to indicate it. But here it's a bit of a misnomer, right? Because this number here, suppose it was, say, 10. Okay? 10 is not going to be the temperature you start at. Right? Um, you'd be t equals, when you sub in t equals 0, you'd be 18 plus 10, which is 28. Okay? So that's why a is just as good a letter. So when you look at a situation like this, what does this mean for the differential equation that comes along for the ride? Okay? You might remember, uh, and please write this with me, right? Normal decay, we're just working with decay at the moment. Normal decay in a temperature situation is something like this. dt on dt... Now, we want to relate that to the original temperature, right? So, in a decay situation, the rate of change, or the rate of, um, you know, this thing losing its temperature, right, is negative because it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's proportional to that temperature. You remember that, right? And, of course, in a normal growth situation, you just lose the minus sign. But here, this is modified decay. It's not so simple, is it? Right? Just like normal, <clears throat> let's actually see what happens if we take an equation like this. Okay? What are we going to get out of this? Well, can you differentiate that thing for me? Do the, I'll do the inside first, which is minus k. And then I'm going to do the outside, which is just a e to the minus kt. Right? But look, that's not t, is it? Right? That's not t. This is t. Okay? So how do I, I mean, I'm not that far though from, be, from being there. So for example, how am I just going to, let's, uh, let's see here. I want to leave this minus k out the front. How am I going to adjust this so that it looks like that? Right? Well, yeah, I'm going to add 18 and then I'm going to take away 18. So if I add the 18 out the front, like so, and then I subtract 18, so I have a net change of zero. Okay, you can see right there, and it's worth highlighting. Right there, aha, that's my expression for t. I didn't have it before until I did this plus and minus business. Okay, so this is really minus k. It's a bad k. Minus k times what? T minus 18. Okay, so this this is my differential equation now for this particular example. Okay, so. What you're looking at here, think about this, right? This means you're dropping in temperature, right? And it's proportional to whatever your temperature is right now. Yeah? What is similar here, well, you're still dropping in temperature. You're still proportional to something, but you're not proportional to your temperature. What is this? This is the difference between your temperature and 18 degrees, which is the ambient temperature. Right? So you're not dropping in proportion to what you are. You're dropping in proportion to the difference. And that should make sense because where is this temperature going to terminate? At time is infinity. You're going to terminate at 18 degrees, right? You can't go any lower than that. Which therefore means if suppose I had an object and it was actually 18 degrees, right? What would that mean about this? Uh, the difference between your temperature and the ambient temperature is zero. So therefore the change in temperature at that point 
is zero, which is exactly what the object should do. Right? Okay, so this result here, this is actually really, really important. Um, this we generalize in this way, and maybe you want to put a box around this one once you've finished writing it. <coughs> I'm going to take this. Some of you will recognize this, in fact. Put a big box around this. This um, letter E, um, I'm using to signify, because I, I could call it like A for ambient temperature, but I've already used A. Um, this E is the temperature of the environment. So that's why they name it that. And some of you, you will recognize this as um, Newton's law of cooling. It's an incredibly important result. Newton's law of cooling. Which, I have to admit, don't worry, I'll put the screen back up in a second, uh, back down in a second rather. I have to admit, I looked at this and I thought, ah, oh, surely, surely, good morning, there's, um, there's a meme in here somewhere, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. I just, I couldn't find the one I wanted. I couldn't find the one I wanted, so I made it. Um, 